Hi, I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. It's Tuesday, June 14th. Uh, we're here. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We're recording from Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as unceded indigenous land. All right. Keith. Now we're off. That's right. In more ways than one. So, Ju <laughs> so June is a bunch of balloons month. Accordion <coughs> Awareness Month, Adopt a Cat Month. Yes, it's a, Sparky will approve. Mm -hmm. It's also LGBTQ Plus Month, and I think all things LGBTQ now holds the distinction of being the longest-running Vermont LGBTQ Plus themed show. So congratulations. However. There have been other LGBTQ plus theme shows, one most notably in the late 1990s that was live with music, interviews, and they had people calling in. Do you remember what it was? No. I have the answer. Yes. <laughs> so looking at events, the first thing I want to acknowledge is that June 12th, was the sixth anniversary of the Pulse Massacre. And I think even more so now, those of us within the LGBTQ plus community need to be acutely aware of how we have been and continue to be targeted with gun-related violence. So, also coming up on Sunday, June 19th is Juneteenth. Yep. Which is now a federal holiday. Uh -huh. And Burlington has made it a municipal holiday, oh. and they will be doing events on Monday the 20th. Nice. So be looking for those. Okay, looking at other events coming up on Tuesday, June 21st at the Savoy here in Montpelier, they are showing Jonathan Agassi Save My Life. Huh. This is a documentary that was filmed between Berlin and Israel over a six year period. Jonathan Agassi is probably one of the most successful gay male porno stars. And this documentary, <coughs> as they said in the review, pulls back the curtain. And what is this industry really like? So on Thursday, June 23rd, Babes, 7 o'clock, gay trivia. Get, get your team together and... Go down and see how you do. Oh, we'd win hands down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then on Friday, June 24th, also in Bethel, is their Pride and Bloom prom starting at 6 o'clock at the town hall. So if you never got to go to your prom, here's your chance. Friday, June 24th through 26th, and this was an event that I had sort of missed before, Rainbow Fest. And this is a weekend-long event that is happening at the Milldale Farm for Wellness and Fairly. Huh. And they're doing camping, yoga, workshops, hiking, paddleboard, sauna, music, dancing, bonfires, community, HIV testing. They are promoting it as Vermont's alternative Pride event. But it's going to cost you $100 to $250 to come spend the weekend with them. So... Forgot that. But there, but there's an opportunity. On Saturday the 25th at the Sangha Studio in Burlington, which is on Pride Street, uh, Pine Street, it is their second annual Community Pride Block Party. What and street? And this, this is Pine, Pine. Street. Pine it's street. an artist collective. Oh. And they've been sponsoring events over the years, um, poetry readings, exhibitions, whatever. So this is... There, come in, spend some time with us, let's have a good time. Also on the 25th in Burlington is the People's Pride. And this is no corporation, no cops, you know, one o'clock, Main and Church Street. Mm -hmm. And then they will march through town. On Sunday the 26th at 2 p.m. in City Hall Park in Burlington is the dedication of the plaque commemorating the first Pride Day in 1983. 
on the 26th, which is the Sunday, is Bennington's Pride Festival. I don't know how Parade, we block pride. And, and I'm not done. <laughs> because we still have Tuesday, June 28th, here in Montpelier, at Three Penny Tap Room, is Pride Eats. The benefit, 5% of all their sales between 11 in the morning and 8 o'clock at night, go to the Pride Center to support programs and outreach. And the Pride Center was doing the, you know, Everyone Eats program mm -hmm. to ensure that LGBTQ food insecure actually had what they need. And they want to do that in Montpelier, too. Yes. And this is happening at, at the tap room. Yeah. So, and, the, and my last is out in the open. They have a job opening. They're looking for a community organizer. There you go. And as the community organizer, you would often be per the people's first go-to when interacting with out in the open. You, you will have the space to create new projects, deepen relationships with longtime community members and collaborators, and bring your own brilliance mm. and ideal to the role. Too bad I'm retired. Linda's on a roll today. We're just having a good time. <laughs> and they're hoping to close the application process by June 30th, and you can apply on the website. Sounds good. Sounds like a good opportunity for some. I There you go. Well, we have some depressing stories, a couple of uplifting stories, but not many. <clears throat> For everybody who's been watching the uh, hearings this week, very interesting. And illuminating. Yes. I, I was going to say, it's Anne that has been promoting herself as being the optimistic one in our group. I know. That's right. And now right. the truth is being revealed. <laughs> can't be bad. But will anything happen? We will see. Okay. Well, we're going to start off with white supremacists. And their founder is among the 31 arrested for conspiracy to riot at an Iowa Pride event. Idaho. Well, Idaho. Idaho. Cordelier? Cord yeah. 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 Okay. So thank you, Ian. 31 of them. 31. So we'll have more about that. Drag queen story hours disrupted by men shouting slurs in Elman, Alameda, Alameda County, California. Authorities said the men wore clothing consistent with the Proud Boys. Richmond, Virginia. Representative Glenn Youngkin was running to be Virginia governor. Um, but And he was the person who defended the suspended teacher over the objection to using the student's preferred pronouns. Given this bipartisan surprise when he hosted a reception celebrating Pride Month at the Virginia Capitol. Well, he is the governor already. He won. Yeah. Youngkin. So he is, yeah, but when he ran, he defend, when he was running, he defended the teacher. Okay. But now everybody was really surprised because he was he held hosted a reception that. celebrating Pride Month. I see. Okay. Boise police are searching for whoever stole thirty five rainbow flags during Pride Month. Mega congressional candidate promises to start executing people who support LGBTQ gay youth. Republican pastor Mark Burns is running for Congress in North South Carolina. He also wants to ex execute Mitch McConnell and Lizzie Graham, along with the parents and teachers who support LGBTQ youth. He has compared LGBTQ supportive adults as Nazis. So there's another good person running in South Carolina. Pennsylvania House votes to remove homosexuality from the state crime code, eliminating the archaic language that will promote a culture of acceptance, say some. We'll see. In the city of Aura, Illinois, Pride may be canceled. The police said that they cannot supply enough officers to provide appropriate security. 
There are two, they are 20 offices short of the required amount. That sounds bogus to me. I know, but you know, everybody is really struggling to find police officers. And I, you know, I think there's a whole story behind that, like, you know, maybe racists don't feel welcome at the police department, so they're not joining in droves anymore. Or I don't know what's going on, but the police are having a really hard time all they, over the country trying to find people. They should adopt the approach that Middlebury is considering of hiring undocumented yes. aliens, undocumented Americans. Yeah. yeah. And while we're pausing, Coeur d'Alene is the name of the Idaho town. Idaho. Okay. okay. Coeur d'Alene. And Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida wants to investigate parents that take their kids to see drag queens. He is open to using child protection laws to outlaw drag shows in the presence of children. He implied that he would use the Florida Child Protection Service laws to terminate the parental rights of adults who take their kids to see drag shows. I'm, I'm assuming he's talking mostly about drag queen story hours and stuff. Mm -hmm. During a conference, he said, that he has asked his people to look into this idea. So, a judge blocks Texas from investigating families of trans youth. Oh, that's good news. Yeah. Three families filed suit, including on one family who said they were reported by hospital staff after their child attempted suicide. So, Rebel Wilson, a comedian, says she is involved with a woman. The 42-year-old actor shared on Instagram her and her girlfriend, Ramon Agruma, an entrepreneur and brand uh, ambassador in L.A. So that's that. And um, I have a lot more stories, but I'm just going to read a few more, and then we can move on to Anne and come back to them later. Friends and community members gathered this week in candlelight vigil, vigil for Julio Ramirez, 25, who died in April after leaving a bar in New York City. He was a social worker from Brooklyn. And as you recall, we talked about that he got into a cab with three mm -hmm. unidentified males, and um, his money was taken and uh, used, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, maybe $3,000. Uh, and as far as I know, there are still, they still have no suspects that um, were involved in this murder. And the Carolina Panthers hire the NFL's first transgender cheerleader. Justine Lindsay, age 25, is a black trans woman, and she announced she would be joining the Panthers soon. Five Tampa Ray players refused to wear the LGBTQ pride-themed jackets because they said it was against their religious beliefs. So. Get rid of them. <clears throat> this week's primary races saw many wins for LGBTQ candidates. We'll have more about that. North Carolina can't deny health care to trans state workers. The um, exclusion of coverage for trans people People's care is illegal discrimination, a federal judge ruled. So that's good news. A Texas town rallies around a gay couple after their pride flags were stolen. This is Texas. Here we go. Keith Dollar and Terry Gardner's community is rallying around the couple. Someone set fire to several flags in Dallas. The couple moved to this town just outside of Dallas from New Orleans, so, okay, Ian. Do you have that story from Oklahoma about the judge reversing? Yes, yes, I do. Good, I'm we'll get on, we'll get that. on to that later. Because that's optimistic news. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm glad you have that. Uh, international headlines. Strange news from Peru. Um, let me just share that with you. The Constitutional Court of Peru has reject, rejected cases seeking registration of Peruvian same-sex couples' marriages uh, entered into in other countries. The court said bringing 
in marriage equality requires a change in the nation's constitution that would be an abuse of the court's position to impose marriage equality, um, that the 2017 Inter-American Court of Human Rights Marriage Equality ruling is not binding on Peru, which of course it is. The inter-American human rights system suffers from idealization, this court said. But of course, the inter-American court ruling is binding on 20 countries, including Peru. Um, Peru is part of the inter-American system, and the organism that defends and protects these rights is called the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. And if the court has taken a decision, I believe that all parties are called to respect that decision. So I don't know what's going on in Peru, but it's very strange. Uh, my worst story of the night involves a young <coughs> lesbian stoned to death uh, in a township near Johannesburg in South Africa. Let me show you a picture before you now. Her name is Ruth Nikki Chigawe. She was 24. Uh, she was originally from Zimbabwe and uh, was brutally murdered. Her body was found on the 27th of May. Uh, she was stoned to death. Um, uh, only on May 31st did the organization confirm her identity. She came to South Africa in 2019. Her parents disowned her because she was... Uh, of her sexual orientation, she found a job in a truck shop and started to rent a room. Weeks before she was killed, she and her girlfriend received homophobic threats from guys around the area, wherein they uttered that they both deserved to be raped and killed. To add to the tragedy, she leaves behind a one-year-old daughter. There's an urgent need for a massive intervention in this part of Johannesburg, said an activist. People live in, LGBTQ people live in fear, and they can't even disclose their relationships in public. The family is awaiting post-mortem results, um, and they need assistance getting the body back to Zimbabwe, which is more challenging because the family is undocumented. A candlelight vigil was held on June 3rd, um, and this is one of a series, I mean, South Africa, has, um, you know, LGBTQ rights are enshrined in the Constitution, but there have been all kinds of murders this year. It's growing at an alarming rate. Uh, this is the fifth reported queer individual to be killed in 2022. Last month, the mutilated body of uh, Nankazogo Caroline Moglong, 27, who'd been missing for a week, was found uh, after her family desperately searched for her. Also in May, the naked body of 22-year-old Unathi Weber was discovered in Cape Town. In March, Pinky Shongwei, a 32-year-old lesbian, was stabbed to death just outside of Durban, reportedly because she rejected a man's romantic advances. On April 27th, 22-year-old, 25-year-old Musa Zulu was gunned down in full view of the public in Durban. Uh, he was buying items at a garage when a man said he hated gays and shot him dead in the parking lot. Days earlier, another LGBTQ plus man, 24-year-old Mofundo Negobis, was seriously injured in a suspected hate crime attack by a group of men near, a Durban, near the Durban City Hall after leaving a gay nightclub. So that's terrible news from South any, Africa. Do they have any, like... No. No? No. Um, That's awful. So in a dramatic switch of gears, let's look, a picture, look at a picture now at over a thousand people attending Donegal's first pride parade this weekend. More pride news comes from the Baltics. Um, and I have to, I'd like to explore this in greater detail. Um, nine years... There's, uh, the Baltic states have a rotating pride system. Um, its neighbors, Latvia and Estonia, rotate the pride celebrations. This year it was in Vilnius, Lithuania, and I spent a lot of time last, uh, 
on the last show talking about the dire circumstance in Lithuania, but now 10,000 people, mm. mostly young adults, have flocked to the capital. Uh, it's a country of 2.8 million people in the biggest Baltic country. country. Nine years ago, <coughs> there were neo-Nazis on both sides and more mm. police than participants, an onlooker said. Since 2009, the annual event has rotated am among the capitals of the three countries, gathering local activists and international allies. Vilnius hosted Baltic Pride for the first time in 2010. Only 400 people marched, and that's where all the police, they had the pronounced police presence. It wasn't easy. People looked at us like they were in a zoo, said uh, the executive director of Lithuania's biggest LGBT group. Our community is very brave to show up, and we lost a we have a lot of allies that marched with us. Big companies like Google, Moody's, and the Nordic Bank, Nordic Baltic Bank, Swede Bank were among the participants and sponsors this year, as well as the embassies of the U.S., Canada, and Norway. The yeah. parents of Matthew Shefford also attended. Under Soviet occupation from 1944 to 1991, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia all joined the, together with other Europeans in other countries in the Eastern Bloc to join the European Union, including Poland and Hungary, of, about which we have spent Lots many time on this show. Um, all, all their human rights records lag behind, unlike their Nordic neighbors, when it comes to sexual minorities. Um, Poland, Romania, and Bulgaria rank worse than Lithuania and Latvia, and Estonia, an economic success story, story, remains in the lower half of the ranking in legal protections for queer people. Yet things are mostly are slowly changing, according to this optimistic article. Both Lithuanian and Latvian parliaments are currently debating similar bills that were, would introduce civil partnerships for same-sex couples, granting them some but not all of the rights of marriage. And I reported on this bill being brought forward in Lithuania. Um, after several attempts and the bill being watered down, an activist said the bill avoids the term family in its wording, for example, she hopes to secure a parliamentary majority in favor of the measure in the next coming weeks and months. Now I'd like to show you a picture of Thomas Raskavicius, Lithuania's only openly gay member of parliament. He said the reluctance to grant LGBTQ people further legal rec recognition comes mostly, not surprisingly, from the Catholic Church, as well as the occupation of this legacy of the Soviet occupation. Um, and then we have a little um, account of the deplorable actions of the Soviet Union, which yeah. I'll spare you. And I'll tell you about this parliament member. He was a lawyer, an LGBTQ activist, who went into politics to create systemic change. Uh, he said he will vote for the civil union bill in the hope that it will help ignite more subversive change in the long term. I'm not happy with the bill because it's full of compromises, he noted. The reality of politics is tough. tough. This is just the first step on the road toward equality. And Latvia is taking a similar step. Uh, and you know what this just reminded me of in a national parallel is this gun rights legislation mm -hmm. that is in the U.S. that's so watered down, you know, it's not going to really make almost an embarrassment, yeah. but a step in the right direction. Anyway, getting back to the Pride March, we're the first generation that did not grow up under the Soviet occupation, a youthful participant explained. We grew up in the European Union. We are free to do as we wish. It's going to get better. Um, he said as Pride marchers, um, as the Pride March, speakers on the floats played global queer anthems from Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl to Gloria Gaynor's legendary I Will Survive. <laughs> so that's mixed news from Lithuania. Um, now let's turn to, uh, there's another story I'd like to get back to. I'm not sure if I'll have time for it though, so 
Uh, the last European story I have involves tennis legend Billie Jean King. Yay. And you all know what she looks like. I'm not going to show a picture of her posing with uh, Manuel Macron as she receives the Legion of Honor Award on the anniversary of the, her historic French Open victory. And she won this 50 years ago. Um, and she's now 78. She said that she is prouder of what I have done off court than what I have accomplished throughout my storied tennis career, which has included a total of 39 Grand Slam titles. I guess being the world's number one and winning Grand Slam tournaments is quite an achievement, but I'm proud to have fought for gender equality. Uh, she dominated, remember she won the Mm -hmm. Bobby Riggs Battle yes. of the Sexes game Everybody that we all was watched. staring at the TV then. In 2020, <coughs> she was among 100, over 170 current and former athletes in women's sports who signed the Friend of the Court brief in support of trans girls in women's playing sports. Yep. Other prominent signatories included World Cup championship, champion Megan Rapino, WNBA tra trailblazer Candace Parker, Bessie Sauerbrunn, Megan Duggan, Leisha Clarendon, and Kate Sowers. There's no place in any sport for discrimination of any kind, King declared. I'm proud to support all transgender athletes who simply want to access an opportunity to compete in the sport they love. She continued, the global athletic community grows stronger when we welcome and champion all athletes, including LGBTQ I athletes. So, uh, I think I'm finished with time. Europe. Let's go to Asia in my next segment. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was thinking Billie Jean King is really a, a hero or hero about, you know, of which Megan Rapino and... She's her successor. Yeah. You know, shoulders she stands on. Yes. Okay. Okay, so anyone who's been following the Montpelier Front Porch Forum, there was an incident over the weekend where a pride flag was vandalized in the downtown area. And I reached out to the person who did the posting, who shared that they put out pride symbols in the past. This is the first time there's been an incident such as this that's occurred at their house and it's the first time this has occurred in their neighborhood. However, it reminds us that regardless of what it is that we are trying to create, we need to be ever vigilant. And if you are experiencing any degree of bias or vandalism, please report it so that we can track what it is that's happening, particularly as you're reporting on Idaho and Patriot Front and the Proud Boys because we saw their leaflets up throughout downtown Montpelier in the past, so we are not immune. But a positive flip to the defacing of the pride flag is the Harvard Union School in Duxbury. Their school board unanimously approved show, displaying the pride flag for the remainder of their school year after being submitted a two-page essay that was written by a student who identifies as non-binary and who shared with the school board their experience of harassment and bullying good. at Harvard Union. So, good going. Little follow-up on New Hampshire mm -hmm. and eight House Bill 1731, and this is the Parents' Rights Bill that we've been reporting on for, for several shows, and that Linda reported on our last show that Governor Sununu said, you know, if it gets to my desk in its current form, I will veto this. And their state attorney general said, you know, the manner in which this bill is written, I think that it is in conflict with our non-discrimination statutes. Mm -hmm. Well, Governor Sununu didn't have to veto it because there was some controversy within the conference committee itself. The members were replaced because they were members that weren't going along with the more conservative Senate version. So when the more conservative conference committee version went back to the House, 
they voted it down. Correct. 176 to 171, that's still very close. But this bill died. Good. Good. So may it stay dead. Farewell. Positive bill. Yeah. Positive. In Massachusetts, <clears throat> they've introduced a parentage bill that will extend who qualifies as being a parent, mm. establishes relationships, a protocol for disputes, talks about surrogacy and um, assisted reproduction. This is the same bill that Vermont passed three years ago. Mm. And Massachusetts is poised to do it now, which means that Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts will all have these very positive parenting bills that acknowledge LGBTQ plus parents and looks at parenting from an entirely different perspective. Not, oh, what's the biology of this, but mm -hmm. what's in the best interest of the child? What a concept. I, <laughs> radical concept. And sort of following up on that, you know, looking at what Linda was reporting about Texas and the hospital staff feeling that they needed to report this transgender youth and their parents and oh. stepping in. I'm going to, I lost my place here. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, we have all enacted protocols or, or bills that say we're not going to cooperate with other states that try to impede on providing care to transgender youth or goes after their parents. If you bring your child to Vermont or any of these other states for care, that's a confidential record and it does not get reported <coughs> back. And Massachusetts, they were looking at if they really needed to introduce a bill to ensure that protection and that integrity. And their attorney general is saying, you know, I think the existing language in their non-discrimination statutes does in fact provide that protection. So New England, yes. we're be, we are rapidly becoming the, we're like two different countries. Exactly. We are we are rapidly becoming we are we are the place where you are safe and you are protected. So good. <coughs> Excuse me. So back to white supremacists. Must be. I know. <laughs> In Idaho. Mm hmm So um they were at this hotel and someone tipped off the FBI or the police that um, they saw these guys getting into a U-Haul, 31 of them wearing masks, um, Proud Boy insignias, uh, caps, uh, cocky pants. Same shirts. I same think they were shirts, blue. same navy blue shirts, beige hats and masks covering their faces. Well, that would look kind of suspicious, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> the police arrested them 10 minutes after they left the hotel, um, and right-winger and Trump supporters are flooding social media now, telling people the usual claims that the Patriot Front is a secret FBI operation to make them look bad. Mm. Okay, the, the key component though is not only were they all dressed in this sort of paramilitary, uh, they no. were heavily armed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they filled the U-Haul, uh, What well, I think it was, you know, enough to supply a small army, yeah. yeah. And they declared that their intent was to cause a riot at the yeah. Pride Parade. Yeah. You know, and they're talking about doing that at voting polls now too, like, they're asking people to um, become voter, uh, what do they call them, poll watchers. Right. And, you know, and they want these destructive people to be there to kind of like really scare off Democrats who might run. So we all need to be aware of that. Um, Swallowed is a queer horror film. This film focuses on two friends on the last night before one of them leaves their backward town in Maine for Los Angeles for a career in gay porn. 
So that sounds Maybe like Maybe it was Jonathan Agassi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a yeah. clip of that? No, I don't. Okay. Nicole Serrano, ex-Christian singer and songwriter, comes out as a lesbian. That's good news, mm -hmm. huh? Dre Queen Story Hour is canceled in a North Carolina town due to violent threats. The town is Apex, North Carolina. So if you live around there, I don't know. Uh, now, here's another movie which I'm really looking forward to starting. It's a series, actually, and it's called First Kill. And it's a queer vampire drama. Creator Victoria Schwab, along with stars Imani Lewis and Sarah Hook, discuss sinking their teeth into a wonderfully gay Netflix series. Oh, the creator, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> the creator grew up with Buffy the Vampire Slayer and wanted to see more in that genre. One is a vampire, one lesbian is a vampire. And the other is a vampire slayer, so they should be they should be chasing each other all around the universe. So it should be very fun. I may have to bring you a second television <laughs> for your apartment. No kidding, <laughs> no kidding. Polly Murray's documentary of the non-binary activist life wins the Peabody Award. Oh, good. So, a teen is arrested for threatening a mass shooting at one of Florida's Pride events. Oh, and this is this is good because I know they've been doing this probably for two hundred years. Is uh, the New York Port Authority is to stop undercover pop public bathroom stings? Oh, Just, finally! I know. A gay trust fund ear's body is found, and his ex has been arrested for murder. Richard Young, twenty-two, had been missing since two thousand and nineteen. He was the heir to a two million dollar trust fund. His ears, the uh, his body was found after being missing for three years. Mm. So that's not so good. Um, and we reported last time about the lesbian mom who went to court and uh, her name was on the birth certificate with her partner, mm -hmm. and they took and the judge took her name off. Well, um, so now she's been, her name has been reinstated on the birth certificate. The ruling has been reversed. Chris Williams and Rebecca Wilson were married in 2019. They had a child through artificial insemination, and both were initially on the birth certificate. So they took it away and they put it back. So that is good news. And then Paul Gunther, the keeper of, cult, of a cultural fame, dies at 65. He helped engineer behind the scenes rescues of monuments, murals, and museums, and the preservation of Times Square's dazzling lights. He, he died of suicide, and, and this was confirmed by his longtime partner, Joel Saunders. So he did a lot for New York. Mm -hmm. An Ohio bill banning trans girls from female sports could require genital checks. Mm. Girls of all ages could be required to have full pelvic exams if the opposing coach questions the identity, the gender identity of a player. That is scary. Yeah, that's awful. Okay, well, Ian, I have some more stories, but we're kind of running out of time, so I will have to add them to next week's agenda so that you can do some of your stories and Keith will have time for his. Trivia. Well, yes. Okay. And he, yeah. So you go, girl. Okay, let's start with a picture of Thailand from Thailand. Bangkok sees the first LGBTQ pride march in 16 years. Um, Where is this? Thailand. Ah. It's the first march with local backing. Uh, thousands of people and allies took part in the first Pride with local backing. March came as Parliament considers increasing right, the rights of same-sex couples. We'll see what happens there. Jerusalem celebrates 20 years of Pride marches. Thousands again marched in a colorful parade. Um, there's a little controversy in Kuwait, which, it, which criticized the U.S. Embassy over pro-LGBTQ tweets, and they don't want the flag. 
they don't want the U.S. Embassy flying the um, oh. rainbow flag supporting gay rights. Um, yeah. Uh, President Joe Biden issued a message of solidarity. Um, Kuwait officials criticized the embassy for supporting homosexuality and demanded that it not happen again. Now, let, not surprising, let, let's take a look at Kuwait, uh, where LGBTQ people are severely restricted, uh, and it is illegal there for men to be gay. A uh, pair of tweets published in English and Arabic from the U.S. Embassy quoted Biden as saying, all humans should be able to live without fear, no matter who they are or whom they love. Too much for the Kuwait authorities. The post um, was supposed to mark the beginning. It was posted to mark the beginning of Pride Month, um, and it appeared with the picture of the flag. Um, rights for LGBTQ people are limited in socially conservative Kuwait one of the 69 countries in the world where being gay is criminalized. According to the Gulf States Penal Code, men who have same-sex relations can be punished by up to seven years. It was a criminal offense up until this year uh, in Kuwait to be trans. A court has now overturned the law as, con as unconstitutional. Use states, the U.S. State, State Department spokesperson told the BBC Uni the United States proudly advances efforts around the globe to protect all individuals, including LGBTQ plus persons from violence and abuse, criminalization, discrimination and stigma, and to empower marginalized populations and local civil society, including the LGBTQ plus community. So the U.S. is sticking to its guns. And no. Kuwait is irritated. Um, I have very exciting North American stories. I'll start with the more uh, most stayed. Only five Mexican states now lack marriage equality. 26 states in the federal capital, Mexico City, have marriage equality. Though four, five or six of those still need to codify it in their laws, meaning legislative action remains required in 10 or 11 states. Now, I'm counting, Linda has granted me permission to do, cover some national entertainment news in the form of the Tony Awards, which was very gay this time. It aired on CBS Channel and 3. And diverse. And diverse. Um, let's start, and I want, you know, all the pictures are copyrighted. So I couldn't show you pictures, but you know, you can go online and see pictures and recordings and reportage. Um, and the MC was fabulous. She was fabulous. Adriana Dubois, I think. Yeah. Um, but let's start with A Strange Loop, which uh, is a scalding story about a gay black theater artist confronting self-doubt and societal disapproval. This won the Tony Award for Best New Musical Sunday Night giving another huge accolade to a challenging contemporary um, production that had already won the Pulitzer Prize. The soul-bearing show, nurtured by nonprofits and developed over many years, triumphed over two flashy pop musicals, MJ, a jukebox musical about the entrepreneur Michael Jackson, and Six, an irreverent consideration of Henry VIII's ill-fated wives in a six-way race. A Strange Loop got praise from critics. On Sunday night, Michael R. Jackson, the writer who spent nearly two decades working on it, acknowledged how personal the project was um, as he collected his first Tony Award for the best book of the musical. I wrote it at a time when I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, he said. I didn't know how I was going to move forward. I felt unseen, I felt unheard, I felt misunderstood, and I just wanted to create a little bit of a life raft for myself as a black gay man. Take Me Out emerged victorious in the best play revival category, particularly a particularly strong field that included productions of American Buffalo, How I Learned to Drive, Trouble in Mind, and for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Written by Richard Greenberg, Take Me Out, first ran on Broadway in 2003 and won the best play Tony that year. 
This year's revival, presented by the nonprofit Second Stage Theater, uh, is about what happens when a baseball player, portrayed in this production by Jesse Williams, comes out as gay. Jesse Tyler Ferguson picked up his first Tony for his portrayal of the player's investment visor. The host was Ariana DuBose, um, who is queer, uh, and it not only honored shows, performers, writers and designers, but also understudies who uh, carried so many performances of the season. Um, DuBose won this year's Academy Award as Anita in West Side Story, paid tribute to the season's extraordinary diversity, saying, I feel like the phrase Great White Way is becoming more of a nickname as opposed to a how-to guide. <laughs> She noted the season's high vol volume of work by black writers, which came about as producers and theater owners scrambled to respond to demands for more representation and opportunity for black artists after the national unrest over racism during the summer of 2020. This year's Class of Tony nominees featured a large number of black artists, reflecting the fact that work by black writers led to more jobs for black performers, designers, directors, and more. Tony Award VI co-creator Toby Marlowe has become the first non-binary composer lyricist to one best score, and the first openly trans-nominated performer was L. Morgan Lee. Um, and we're going to New York, and we're going to see a bunch of plays, so Ian's going to tell you all about that when we get back. Well, I don't want to bore you with them, but it's very exciting, and the Tonys were electric. They were really good. Everybody seemed so excited to be back. Yes. To be working, to having, you know, I mean, it was, it, the electricity was in the air in this show. Well, now let's move to Canada. I know I'm taking, I'm stealing <coughs> Keith's. Uh, Bailiwick, but I have a movie that Linda and I saw that I'd love to tell you about. It's a 2021 Canadian dramatic romantic coming of age film directed by Breton Hanam. Running time 100 minutes, country Canada, language English and Micmac. It's an extension of Hanam's earlier short film Wildfire, which was the winner of the award for the best film at the, at the Nova Scotia Awards in 2020. We like that. It was really good. It stars Philip Lewitsky as Lincoln, a young man in his late teens who was raised disconnected from his maternal Micmac heritage by his abusive white father. Following the dis discovery that his mother, Sarah, whom he had long been told was dead, is in fact still alive, he takes his younger brother, Travis, on a journey to find her. En route, they meet the openly two-spirit Pasme, who becomes both a guide to Lincoln and reconnecting in reconnecting with his indigenous tools, roots, and a love interest. Let's take a look at the trailer for Wildhood. Just look like the sky or the ocean. To me, they look the same. And what if they don't fit anywhere? That's how your mother felt. She felt like she didn't belong. He said she was dead! She's dead the day she left his house, all right? She don't want you. Into dirt bikes? What's your favorite ride? Are you Micmac? Link's Micmac. No, I'm not. It's Micmac. Yeah, we don't need your help. That's all that. For Gaelia. For dancing. A good dancer can make a bit of cat. You any good?
Bom, que vier, bicho, que é de bonito, que é. Você gosta disso? Whatever. Você quer fazer? Ok. I really enjoyed it. That was really good. I recommend it highly. It's on Hulu, and we saw it on. It was part of a festival, but I'm sure you can find it around. And you might have Hulu. And if you have Hulu, that's the place to go. <laughs> and and it may be doing the circuit. So. I'm sure it is. Yeah. So. Really quickly before I do the trivia, elections, they really matter. And if you have candidates that you really want to see make it to the general election, you need to get out of vote in the primaries. And early primary voting starts June 25th, which is only a couple of weeks away, and the primary here in Vermont is August 9th. Traditionally, primaries has a low attendance, the people who show up are the ones who are determining who goes on to the general election. And we have several out candidates that are going to need our support if they're going to make it to the general election. Early voting for the general election starts October 1st. <clears throat> you know, the general election is Tuesday, November 8th. You can do early voting or what we used to call absentee voting by either going onto the Secretary of State's website or getting in touch with your town clerk to have a ballot mailed to you because you may wake up and forget that it's election day. No. Or, or you may be out holding a sign to support your best candidate. So th the trivia question, other than us, who is of course your favorite LGBTQ plus theme show, there have been others. And in the late 1990s, there was the one that actually got a fair amount of recognition. This is Vermont. We this is Vermont. Five. This is Vermont specific. I mean, I was very clear that these are our shows. Okay. And this was in Burlington, and it was what was then called VCAM. And they did it live. And people <coughs> would phone in. And I remember when they interviewed first Lieutenant Governor Barbara Snelling and then me, and then Nurse Ratchet, who the said, real nurse Ratchet. This is what you, well, no, it was Nurse Ratchet from the Safer Sex Program ah. of Vermont Care saying, This is what's going on out there, and this is why you need to wrap it. I, yeah, imagine that sitting next to Barbara <laughs> Snelling. The show was Sherry Tart and Yolanda. Oh. They were outrageous drag queens. And Yolanda is actually still performing in Brooklyn and has gained quite the reputation. And the reason that it's come up is there were 70 episodes. And when Yolanda was here on a visit, brought all of the old tapes back, and they are now in digital format and available in their library. So in who in our library? No, no, no. The what it what had been VCAM, it is now okay. merged, but the cable access program in Burlington. Great. Yeah. So people can just go on there and kinda take a look around. Okay. I have uh, a Ukrainian story. You do. Mm hmm but Because you, she's looking up and it's like we've got we got a couple of minutes. minutes? We only have two minutes? Well, we have four, but we have to say goodbye. And Anyway, go ahead. All right. right. Uh, I wanted to spotlight an organization in um, Berlin called Quartira, which welcomes Ukrainian refugees and Russian exiles. And I have a picture to go with it. This is Polina Punagova, 27, who's Russian, and her partner, Julia Mosnik, 37, who was born in Kiev. And they were vacationing in Budapest when Putin invaded Russia. They live in St. Petersburg. No, he didn't invade Ukraine. Russia. I'm sorry. Ukraine. Ukraine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. He invaded from Russia to Ukraine. And um, so their, all the flights were canceled. Um, their passports were in question. Um, and 
so they didn't know what to do, and their dog and their cat were home being pet sat. Uh, and in Kiev, in uh, St. Saint Petersburg, Saint where they Petersburg. lived. Okay. But Julia's mother was living in Kiev and still is, and she, uh -huh. you know, she didn't want to leave, and they were worried about her. So uh, anyway, this organization, Queer Tira in Berlin, came together, helped them, and even brought their pets. Uh to reunite with them. So they're joyful and they're settled and they're, uh, terrible things are going on for Russian people in Russia who oppose the war. They're being yes, tortured. Yes, I can only and, imagine. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm, I'm glad we get to take a quick look at their story. In the way. Did the mother come? No, the mother though has moved to a safer part of Kiev and seems to be less- um, Threatened. Threatened. Okay. Yeah. So, on that note, does anybody, we have a, about a minute left, does anybody have anything to discuss or we're out of here? We're out of here. All right. Until next time, remember, it's more important than ever. Resist.